father kept his word. The path to Eden is clear to those who have... We call it the Great War now. It's not been long and things have been rough. Welcome to Survivor Stories. I'm Dasa Ben Ami, a responder. I've been working with the responders for a couple of years now. I'm from Charleston originally, so it was easy to join up. What wasn't easy was the work. Rebuilding Appalachia from the rubble while survivors flocked to us regularly from all over. So many have come and gone. Their stories untold, their names lost to time. I thought we should preserve this history somehow. I've decided to ask people to record their thoughts, their stories, anything they want to preserve forever. I'll call this series The Survivor Stories. I'll start with me. I was an anthropology PhD student at Vault Tech University, final year. I was printing my thesis when I heard the sirens. I, I thought for sure my father, a Vault Tech employee, could take us all with him, but uh, only two reservations came through. I refused to go. With my little brother, he went to the vault. They could not persuade me, though they tried. In the end, I pushed them inside it, and that was it. After that, I, I went back home to Charleston and, well, survived. Eventually, the responders formed, and I, I signed up right away. Hard. The flood was devastating. Relocating to Morgantown Airport and now Flatwoods has been. I, I remain optimistic. Been with them now for, uh, well, I guess two years. We have big plans. We can do so much to help. Maybe. Just maybe. We can rebuild enough to be okay. And in the meantime, I will continue to record stories of survivors when I can. We are your history. This is Dasa Ben Ami, signing off for now. Hi. Dasa asked me if I would talk about um, how I got here. She asked everybody, so I, I said okay. My name's Colonel, and I'm 13 years old. I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. Um, the bombs and the messed up people and the cows with two heads, all of it. I was bad. Just bad. I, I cheated on my spelling test. I, I kicked Chip Wilkins in the shins until he cried. I pushed Rosie McCloy down the stairs. Um, I, I cut holes in the bottom of all the gym shorts, and put glue in the mashed potatoes in the cafeteria. I told Harold Newell to eat 10 dead flies a day in order to grow muscles, and uh, I put Nuka-Cola in the rat cage water bottles at the pet store. And, um, I just wanted to say I'm sorry about everything. Because my dad said if I wasn't this way, the bad things wouldn't happen. I, I haven't seen Daddy since the bombs and... I, I guess he left because of that, too. It's okay. I'm, I'm trying to be good now, though. I'm, I'm not old enough to be a volunteer, but Dasa said I could help collect food and water, so I'm getting better, I promise. And, um, Daddy, if you're listening, I... I promise I won't be bad anymore, so you can come back now, okay? Okay, bye. Dasa has asked us all to document our stories for posterity, you know. Well, it seems like a fine idea, so, hi. I am Kesha McDermott. When the bombs fell, I was in Watoka, coordinating a statewide science fair for that year's high school kids. 
and the theme was the future of energy. After the bombs, everything was pretty chaotic. Scavenging for food and fighting off rabid survivors. Oh, it was just a bad time all around. I found a couple of surviving kids from the high school whose parents didn't make it. And we holed up in a house in town for a while. After a bit, I was able to solder the circuitry in an old radio, and we tuned in to a broadcast from the responders. Oh, we were overjoyed. The trip from Watoka to Flatwoods. It was rough, mind you. The kids and I ran into a group of assholes in the mountains who stole our food and water. I can't tell you how happy I was to find the responders in Flatwoods. Tents for everyone, open kitchens, medical supplies, protection. <laughs> we were safe. They had a problem, though. Their water sources were contaminated heavily. People were boiling water, but not long enough to make it safe. So, I stepped up and I said, I'll build a testing kit to monitor the contamination and I will teach folks how to properly boil water. <laughs> and I did. The world is getting better, but slowly. We need to make sure it doesn't relapse too. It's going to take time and care, that's all. Well, time, care, and science. Ah, hello, person in the distant future. Uh, Dasa told us these tapes would be used as historical records someday. <laughs> Pretty nifty. So, my name is Miguel Caldera. Let's see, uh, my story begins in an office. I used to be a programmer at Vault Tech, one of many. Nobody special, you see. And, you know, and, and that's okay. <laughs> I used to stare out that window by the coffee machine and think, ah, shucks, I wish I could leave this job and hike in the woods every day. <laughs> I'd dream about walking the Appalachian Trail, setting up camp wherever I liked, and traveling with close friends. Ah, <sighs> dreams kept me going. Well, you know, when the bombs fell, I was terrified, just like anybody else. I wasn't in a vault, so I just, you know, I had to figure it all out, too. The responders found me. I had a little campsite, some supplies. I hacked the Protectron to guard me while I slept, but I miss people. I did. It's been all right, you know? The apocalypse and all. I know that seems weird, but I have freedom now. I can actually help people. I even met somebody. A volunteer who delivers supplies. <laughs> Imagine that, right? Even when you think everything is over, it's... it's not. It goes on. I mean, it's awful too. You know, don't get me wrong. All the people dead and hurt. But those are things beyond my control. So, you know, I, I'm making the best of it. These days, I'm important. People treat me like I matter because, well, there's so few of us. That, you know, we can't afford to think otherwise. So for all you future people, just know that we lived through something horrible, but we did it. Somehow, we're alive. And if you're hearing this, then, well, I guess at least some of us made it, right? So hey, <laughs> chin up, kiddo. You'll be okay. Okay? Responder Dasa gave me some supplies in exchange.
exchange for my survivor story. So, hi. My name is Scott Shepard. Things are going all right. I was a nurse before the war, and I, I guess nothing much has changed. I just work for the responders now, and I don't get paid. I, the government is basically the same now as it was years ago. Wrecked. Disorganized. Cannot be trusted. Everyone knows this. You want to know why the war actually happened? Aliens. You think I'm joking? Listen. Now right before everything went to hell, I saw them. I was grilling hamburgers out in the yard with my dog, and I heard rustling from the bushes and a zapping noise. Next thing I know, I'm lightheaded and I felt myself fall into the ground. And I didn't even have a lot to drink. I woke up and I saw some little thing run into the bushes with my dog following it. And I knew something was wrong. I found my dog later with a clump of green skin in his mouth. Green, like moss or something. The bombs fell almost 10 days later. Nine days, 19 hours to be exact. That's 235 hours precisely. You know what that is, right? That's right. The atomic number of the fiso isotope of uranium. They had a plan from the very beginning. Why would they come after me first? Scott Shepard, the nurse. Well, good question. I'm glad you asked. They have our blood. They knew which ones of us would survive. This is one big experiment to them. This whole thing was staged. Our lives, our thoughts, everything was designed for us. Just like this conversation. Every word I'm saying. Planned. Time to wake up, Appalachia. Find the ones holding the strings and cut the cords. Boy, it's been like... Ten years since I did one of these. Dasa said she lost my original one, though. Bummer. My name is Colonel, so... Hey. Hi. Uh, let's see. Um, bombs fell when I was a kid. My dad died in the war, you know. So, this is all pretty normal. My story is, I guess... boring. Uh, so, Dasa found me when I was 13 or so. She brought me the responders. They taught me everything. I became a volunteer. It was great. For the past five years, I've been a responder myself. I help kids who lost their families. I get them safe, trained. Just act like a big brother. Every year we find fewer people, though, so... I don't know. Things are not good out there. Just... Just getting simple food and water is tough. And the Brotherhood... Well... We thought that would be different. I thought everything would be different, though. Uh, well, so anyway, maybe in ten years, Dasa will ask me to do another one of these survivor stories. <laughs> Till then, peace, Appalachia. Reverend Delbert Winters here, born and raised in this very town. Met my own church to the responders for their outpost here, and, uh, you're welcome. The responders are on a true mission, you see. Helping folks through thick and thin, till the heavens open up again and take us all up anyways. When this all happened, I figured like most, it was time. This was the end, but, but it wasn't, was it? We're still here. At first, I thought it was a mistake, that we was missed, forgotten. Maybe we did some wrong. Didn't give enough to charity, maybe. Didn't praise his name, even in the worst of times. Maybe thought some things that ought not to have been thought. So I asked him. I asked how. Why? I fought your wars on Earth. I'm ready to fight them up there by your side. Then, in my despair, I saw some survivors eating raw rat carcass behind a dumpster. You ought to cook that first, I warned them. Seemed obvious. We tried, but got sick, they said, covered in their own filth. I realized right then and there, 
that I was being tasked. From then on, I built kitchens, cooked good food, fed anyone who walked up with an empty belly. And I was thankful for my task in life. Thankful. <laughs> Next time hell or high water land in my stoop, I'll be swept clear away with it. But until then, let's share a home-cooked meal together, all right? Is this thing on? Great. Hello, survivors of this garbage dump. I'm Sophie, and this is my stupid survivor story. This dump should go. Oh, yeah. Before the bombs, I was a librarian. And now I can read everything all the time. Whee! Look at me! I'm lucky. Wait, no, no. Maybe as one of those farmers who prepared for the end times. Some sort of religious thing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. No, no, I, I got it. I was a sweet little kid and lived off some cat food containers in a super duper mart for months near my parents' rotting carcasses. Nobody came. Nobody. I learned how to deal. You should too. The responders are a joke. Nobody helps anybody anymore. Get a grip. If you're not a total idiot, you'll get out of this dump before the responders get you killed. Leave the sick behind. I'm better off. Trust me. Whiny babies can stay here and play make-believe, but anyone with half a brain will go up to the mountains and drop the dead weight. Delbert already tried to stop me. Sorry to say nobody will be around to teach you how to eat shit now, Flatwoods. Bye, suckers. Love always, Sophie. Just talking to this? Am I loud enough? Okay. Um. Hi. What do you want me to say exactly? Yeah, so just talk about how you got here and maybe a little bit about your life. This is a historic document. Go ahead, Tabitha. Okay. 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 So, well, thanks. Ah, uh, okay. I've been sober for nine days. Mm, I got here nine days ago. My name is, is Tabitha. And this is my story. I just found out about everything. <laughs> the war, the bombs, I, I just... I just realized this was uh, <laughs> really happening. For years, I thought the chems were playing tricks with my mind, hurting my brain. I thought it was the worst trip ever. Every time I had come out of my haze long enough to look for food, I'd find more chems and, well, I kept going. And I kept seeing madness. Look, um, I would have been wandering around fighting giant rats and eating garbage if not for the responders. They're, they're good folks. That doc in the church, um, got me some meds that are helping out a lot. And they have group therapy meetings and, and it's good, it's good. I, I, I think it's helping. But listen, um, you should avoid the mountains. They'll just get you mixed up. Get you doing things you don't want to do. Hurting people mostly. I remember so many chems up there. I spent 
too long there, and... I couldn't. Oh, it's okay, Tabitha. Remember what we said in the group? Take your Adictol and rest, and things will be okay soon. It's okay. We're here for you. Yeah. I'm taking it. When I feel better, I'm going out west, though. Getting out of this place. Getting out, getting away from the cams, all of this. I feel better every day, but, you know, years of cams, years of rads, years of sleeping in the muck. It adds up. Yeah. I'm gonna get back to sleep now, okay? Okay. Thanks for sharing your story, Tabitha. Get some sleep. You'll be okay. You're safe now. I pressed the button. Hush! I think it's recording now. Shush! Hello? Hello there? Oh, I think it's working. <laughs> I hate these things. This is Willie May. And I was asked to talk a bit about my life since the war to help educate future children someday. I think that's nice. I thought I'd just watch my programs entertain the grandkids in my retirement. But that didn't turn out to be the case. I'm just glad they all made it to the vault in time, you see. When I saw it in a dream, I knew my prayers were answered. My husband Frank used to work in the mines. Just a bit before the war, there was news of tremors. He didn't come home. I don't know what happened to him or why he never came home for sure. And between you and me, I'm fine with that. Since the war, I've just read my old newspapers and listened to music. It's very peaceful for once, which is just right nice by me. You ever hear of the Watoga Times Atomic Lottery? The winner got ten years worth of Blamco mac and cheese, and Salisbury steak, and, and Nuka Cola, of course. I played that lottery for twenty years, and I finally won the month before the war. It lasted only eight years, though. But who can you complain to? By the time it ran out, I had heard the responders' radio broadcast, so I went out to find them and get supplies. Bless their hearts. Well, I'm going home now. For a bit, anyways. How do I turn this thing off? Oh, blast these things. Not this button. Not this one. Oh, oh here it is.